Hello, welcome to another session of Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, coming to you uh, courtesy of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, joint venture with the Digital Pathology Association and Path Presenter. And uh, my time is uh, supported by the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center, and our cases often come from here, the uh, Stevenson Oklahoma Cancer Center located on the campus of the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center and NIH uh, designated cancer center. Our case today, again, from the uh, realm of gynecologic pathology, a 65-year-old woman with postmenopausal bleeding and an abnormal stripe on uh, transvaginal ultrasound. Uh, she ultimately came to resection, uh, and uh, here was a somewhat polypoid tumor uh, located around the uh, uh, endometrium with an area of apparent invasion. And as we can see at low power, it's primarily concentrated on the endometrium, but appears to have a more uh, invasive uh, area here uh, extending into the uh, myometrium a few millimeters from the serosa. There's a lot of pale bluish and pink uh, material in the lumen of the glandular structures here. And so it'll be instructive to look at this. Um, as we uh, come down a little bit onto higher power, we can see that there's a, a lot of mucin here. And uh, particularly if we hone in on these epithelial cells, we see that they're very tall columnar type cells uh, with a lot of clarity in the cytoplasm, some clear spaces here, um, and this abundant uh, mucin secretion uh, within the uh, uh, lumen of the glands. Um, looking around, we can see that this tumor has some more solid areas, uh, such as we see over here. Uh, with, um, again, very abundant, uh, very clear cytoplasm, fairly low-grade nuclei here, um, and then this bluish uh, secretion in the uh, lumen. Now, looking at these cells uh, and this uh, very prominent cell borders, uh, we might include a clear cell carcinoma in our differential diagnosis, of course. Uh, but in doing that, we want to make sure that we have the appropriate high-grade nuclei uh, which I don't think we really see here. These nuclei are uh, fairly fairly low-grade nuclei, very uniform, very uh, uh, vesicular appearing, uh, without prominent nucleoli or very rare nucleoli only. Looking a little bit further, let's go on to the other area where it seemed to be more in situ uh, here in the uh, glandular lumina here, and you see again this very uh, pale eosinophilic uh, and clear cytoplasm, uh, basal located nuclei, back-to-back -back glands, uh, as you see here, uh, but low-grade nuclei and abundant uh, secretion in the lumen, sometimes watery, and then as we saw in that other area, uh, occasionally more mucinous uh, type of appearance. So uh, we have an invasive adenocarcinoma with a solid component here. Uh, looking to see, do we have any other features? Do we have squamous differentiation or other features along with that? Uh, and I don't think we do in this situation. So um, this is an interesting case to contrast with uh, conventional uh, endometrial carcinomas, uh, which we can do in the next slide. Uh, just to compare what uh, normal endometrial glands look like. And for those of you who've been following along, you'll recognize this case. Uh, this is a more typical uh, endometrial adenocarcinoma. Again, fairly low grade, a little bit of solid area. And uh, again, we see more basally oriented nuclei. But notice how the cytoplasm here uh, is fairly uniform, eosinophilic, a little bit of a brush border and uh, so on the secretion in the glands, but not that very prominent clear cell change uh, that we saw in the case we've uh, just discussed. So this brings up the question of uh, variants of endometrial adenocarcinoma, uh, which is the topic for our discussion here. Um, so we have the usual types, such as the case I just showed you. Uh, there's endometrioid carcinomas, which have squamous differentiation, and we see these fairly frequently. Uh, less frequently, we might see areas of villoglandular uh, differentiation or expression with a very exophytic uh, villus appearance. And then we have secretory carcinoma, which I believe is what we're dealing with here today. 
a very abundant secretion and this very pale, uh, clear cytoplasm with uh, prominent cell borders. Uh, there are also endometrioid carcinomas with small non-villous papillae. These are the tumors that uh, tend to mimic uh, papillary serous carcinoma, but are entirely low grade. Uh, we had one of those in a recent case, and I'll show you an, uh, that example just to refresh your memory. There are occasional ciliated variants of uh, endometrioid adenocarcinoma, and there, then there are just rare uh, cases with uh, spindled or cor corded components, sort of um, MMMT-like uh, uh, components that are very low grade, tumors with sertoliform features, and then occasional tumors that have high-grade areas that uh, tend to mimic trophoblastic differentiation. Uh, rare other glycogen-rich variants and argyrophilic uh, variants sort of round out the list uh, for us today. But let's take a look here at this uh, variant with the small non-villous papillae, as long as we're uh, focused in on uh, some of these endometrioid variants. Here's our case, an example, and we see it's got uh, sort of uh, villous architecture, but within the glands are these uh, very fine papillary uh, structures um, that have uh, very low-grade nuclei. Uh, we see the typical endometrioid carcinoma cells lining the, the, uh, the uh, base of the glands or the villus structures, and then these uh, sort of exophytic papillary excrescences into the lumen of that uh, larger gland with abundant eosinophilic cytoplasm and a very prominent papillary architecture. Again, as we noted before, these are all P53 negative, not a wild tape, um, and have these low-grade nuclei rather than the high-grade uh, nuclei of serous carcinoma. So secretory carcinoma of the endometrium, um, it's usually not associated with any uh, recognized source of either endogenous or exogenous hormone secretion, though that can be present um, and certainly uh, uh, would uh, explain the secretory appearance. Um, it uh, is generally generalized, but can be focal when, it's, uh, when it is present as a as a hormone-related change, it tends to be a little bit more focal or uh, not universal in the tumor. Uh, the behavior of these uh, tumors is uh, similar to conventional endometrioid adenocarcinomas. Um, in other words, the same staging criteria seem to apply. And as our case indicated today, uh, the very important uh, differential is clear cell carcinoma uh, because obviously the cytoplasmic borders can be very prominent and clear and you want to make sure that you don't uh, uh, mistake that because the treatment will be quite different. The molecular biology is different and the uh, behavior is different. Uh, clear cell carcinoma is usually high nuclear grade, uh, secretory carcinoma, low nuclear grade. Uh, staining characteristics, uh, clear cell will be NAPSIN A positive, secretory carcinoma will not. And uh, secretory carcinoma will not have the solid papillary tubulocystic architecture, the hobnail cells, and so forth that we associate uh, with clear cell carcinoma. Now, secretory carcinomas can have squamous elements, which would not be seen in uh, clear cell carcinoma. Although we do see mixed variants of endometrioid and clear cell carcinoma. So uh, just because you see squamous elements, don't uh, overlook the possibility that you have clear cell carcinoma in a, some sort of a mixed uh, feature. Other things that might occasionally enter into the diagnostic considerations would include a, a very florid area stellar reaction, although that's usually in a different age group. Uh, some glycogen rich carcinomas or foamy cells associated with conventional adenocarcinomas can occasionally uh, mimic uh, secretory changes. So our sign-out diagnosis today, fairly straightforward, secretory carcinoma of the endometrium or endometrioid adenocarcinoma secretory type, um, and this occurring in a uh, postmenopausal woman uh, without exogenous or endogenous hormone secretion to account for that secretory change. Well, thank you for joining me and being with us for this uh, brief case. Uh, I hope that uh, if you liked it, you'll subscribe to the channel, uh, add your comments, uh, share it, uh, pass things around uh, uh, and uh, introduce other people to this uh, service. And uh, certainly we always welcome your comments and look forward to hearing from our uh, viewers and the things that uh, are uh, forming challenges for you. Until next time.
Thanks for joining me.